Hello, my name is Shelby Jansen. I'm the lead faculty for mathematics at Wichita Area Technical College. And in this video, we're going to look at the syllabus for PACER Math. Now, whether you're enrolled in PACER Math 1, 2, or 3, the syllabi are all very similar, and I'll talk about the differences as we go through. To locate your syllabus, you'll need to be in Blackboard and look in the Read Me First tab. There'll be several different things that your instructor will go over with you that you can always refer back to, but we are we're going to focus on the syllabus in this video. The first thing you notice is it will have your instructor's name, phone number, and email. Remember that you can contact your instructor um, directly through Outlook email or I would recommend you contact your instructor through your Blackboard email which is over on the left hand side that says My Mail. The course description for this particular course, which is PACER 1, is to provide the opportunity for students to master the math skills required for their chosen academic career goals via an individualized self-accelerated pathway. This course is equivalent to Math 020 or Math Fundamentals. For those of you enrolled in PACER 2 or PACER 3, then that first statement will be the same. However, you have already mastered and completed PACER 1, which you already got credit for Math Fundamentals, and now you're currently working on credit for Intermediate Algebra. Uh, this little section, PACER Math, just kind of describes how the class is arranged. It is an open learning environment in which you will be working on a computer at your own pace through the course. Now, of course, at your own pace means that you are still moving forward and not staying in one lesson the entire course. Uh, if you are in PACER 1, you are required to finish modules 1 through 7 in order to pass the course. And if you're in PACER 2, then you will be required to complete modules 8 through 12. And if you're in PACER 3, you are required to finish all the way up through module 16. The materials that you're going to need for this class my Math Lab eCourse for Developmental Math, and it comes with an access card and a notebook. So those are the two things that are required. Now, when you start in PACER 1, you're going to actually use these same materials for PACER 1, 2, and 3. So you only have to buy this once. A scientific calculator, once you get through um, Module 5, then you will be allowed to start using a calculator beginning in Module 6. So you will want to have a scientific calculator for that. We recommend a three ring binder, um, headphones or ear earbuds, although headphones and earbuds, um, or we have headphones in our PACER lab at Southside, so we have some that you can use, but of course we would encourage you to bring your own, and then optional, a personal laptop. Um, we do have a laptop cart in the PACER lab at Southside, or you can bring your own laptop. Tutoring and remediation um, are available through the Academic Success Center, and if you're needing to know the hours for the tutoring area in the Academic Success Center, we have hours at NCAT and we have hours at Southside. Now these are pretty general, so you probably want to look at a tutoring schedule by day or by name. This is going to be more specific as to who is there and what their skill set is. So if we look at Southside, on Mondays you can see that we have um, a couple different math instructors available. It looks like a lot of math, uh, but then on Tuesdays we have somebody there for reading and math. Usually there's going to be somebody that can help you with your math in the ASC, but you always want to double check the schedule and make sure. And this is available at watc.edu on the home page, and if you go into the academics area, there is the tutoring link. So back to our syllabus. Of course, um, college policies can, can also be found in the Read Me First area. Academic honesty, please make sure that you are doing your own work. And all of our exams are proctored, so you will be taking those for sure. Blackboard modules, everything is organized into modules. And since we're looking at PACER 1, um, there are seven required modules. Now, when you look at the coursework, you'll notice that there's actually all the modules for all of the PACER courses listed in coursework. That is because since you are able to move at your own pace and 
self-accelerate through the modules, you might actually get through more than what is required. So that is why everything is here for you in your coursework. So back to our syllabus. How much time should you be spending on math each week? Um, of course you're going to be in class working and then you will you will want to spend some time outside of class as well. Just like in a regular course, you usually go to class, your instructor shows you an example, um, or you take tests or things like that. You take notes, um, and then you go home and you do your homework. So this class, yes, you are still coming to class and you're working during class, but you're not going to be able to get everything done that you need to get done during class time. You will need to work outside of class as well. And especially if your goals are to get through more than the required. So if you're wanting to complete Pacer 1 and Pacer 2, you will definitely need to work outside of class to make that happen. The way you will be graded in this course, 20% of your grade is your notebook and in-class activities, 30% are the mo module assignments, and 50% are the module exams. There is no final exam for this course. This is a mastery-based course, so you have to get a certain percentage before you're allowed to even move forward. The notebook. Uh, the My Math Lab Notebook will guide you through the e-course lesson by lesson. It provides vocabulary and practice problems modeled after each guided example as well as extra space to show work and take notes. So this notebook is how you are going to learn the material. So you're always going to start with your notebook and sometimes students like to look at their notebook and work through those problems first and then look at the tutorials online. Some people like to look at the tutorials online and then work in their notebook book. It's entirely up to you, but you do need to work through that notebook first before you start the homework. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated with your homework assignments because you haven't learned the material or taken notes. So just because this is moving at your own pace, you still have to learn the material before you start working. So in class, during class meetings, you'll be viewing interactive modules in Pearson's My Math Lab, completing workbook exercises, taking notes, working on assignments in Pearson's My Math Lab, participating in class activities, and conferencing one-on-one -on -one with your instructor about your progress. That's one of the big benefits to taking Pacer Math is every class period you get to meet with your instructor to discuss your progress, to, di to discuss certain problems you might have, uh, to, uh, you might also celebrate when you pass that exam with an 82%. Um, but all of those things you get to talk to your instructor about and they can guide you through this course. So that is one of the unique features about this. Module assignments, all of your homework assignments are done in Pearson. Um, there are homework assignments, there are what we call concept checks, and there are also exams and all of those things are going to be in Pearson. You are required to complete the assignments in order. A score of 80% must be obtained prior to accessing the next assignment. However, you don't have to just stop at 80%. You can work through the homework problems as many times as you want and get that 100%, and we encourage you to do so. Practice makes perfect. Module exams. There are three different types of exams in Pearson. We have a pretest, wherein each module will have a pretest that would determine your individualized homework. If you score at least an 85% on the pretest, then you can move immediately on to the next module. You don't have to work on that particular module, but you have demonstrated that you know everything that you need to know. However, if you score less than 85%, then you will work through the assignments in that module and take the post-test. Another thing that the pretest does is if you do not get that 85% or higher, let's say you get a 70, then what Pearson does is it individualizes your homework so that if you did really, really well on one particular concept, it's already going to mark those problems as completed and you don't have to go and do those. You can focus on the ones that you really need help with and you can talk to your instructor about and you can work through your workbook on um, some sample problems. 
At the end of the module, there is a practice test. It is not required. It is not part of your overall grade. It is recommended that you do the practice test prior to the post test. However, if you want to do the post test first, you most definitely can do that. Um, if you did not pass the pretest with at least an 85%, then you will be required to take the post test and score at least a 75%. If you score below a 75%, then you and your instructor will develop a study plan involving a series of activities that will allow you to analyze and correct your mistakes prior to attempting the post test a second time. You have to get at least a 75% to move forward. So if you don't reach that goal, then you will be required to either go back and work on a practice test, you'll visit with your instructor one-on-one -on -one and analyze your errors, um, but there's a lot of different things that your instructor can do to help you reach that minimum goal of 75%. There is not a final exam in this course, nor is there any extra credit. Um, there is no late work. It doesn't really apply to this course since you can truly move through the course at your own pace. Um, you're never really late. Now, of course, if you get to the end of the semester and you have not completed the required modules, then you'll receive zeros for all of those and you'll receive an F for the course. But during the course, there are no um, due dates, so it's all truly at your own pace. Last day to withdraw from the course um, is always going to be listed here, so make sure you are aware of that and your instructor will also be letting you know when it's getting close to that withdrawal time and you'll want to visit with your academic coach to discuss withdrawing from a course if you're concerned that you're not going to pass or get through the requirements of the course. Of course, communication, um, you have your email for your instructor, so be sure that you are contacting them. You will see them twice a week um, or once, depending on when you're taking your PACER course. So you will see them during the week, but if you need to get in contact with them, you can email them directly or you can email them through the My Mail in, on the left-hand column of your Blackboard. The rest of this is pretty standard as far as any syllabi that you see um, in any course that you take here at WATC, so you just need to be aware of those. Here is the curriculum sequence for everything for, from PACER 1 all the way through PACER 3. So you can see everything that's going to be required. If you're taking the entire sequence, we've got 17 modules um, that are listed here and you'll have to require all of those. It is possible to pass and get through all of the modules in eight weeks. We actually had a student do that in a summer semester, get through zero all the way through 17 in eight weeks. So she was determined and she had some goals, um, but your goals are probably going to be different. So you really need to look at what your academic schedule is and what your course load is and decide truly what is a realistic goal for you. Um, we want you to get through at least the required, but I would like for you to strive maybe for an extra module. So if you have to get through seven, then maybe your goal is to get through eight. And if that's your goal, visit with your instructor regularly and they will help you get to that goal. If you have any questions about the syllabus or how the course works, please be sure to visit with your instructor.